Good afternoon. My name is Ngozi Ibe and this is Health and Wellness on Leadership TV. So on today's episode, we are going to be talking about diabetes, management and prevention. So before we even go about talking about the management and prevention, first of all, we need to know what diabetes is. And right here with me in the studio, it's not just anyone, but Dr. Ramatsu Shwaibu, who is a consultant, physician and endocrinologist who also specializes in diabetes and endocrine conditions. He's also passionate about diabetes patients and treating and everything that has to do with diabetes. So we're going to hear from her, from a very experienced person, from an experienced doctor to tell us more what we need to know about diabetes. So welcome on to today's episode. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you for having me on this show. I'm delighted to be here to talk about diabetes today. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. So she, she just gave me heads up that next two weeks is going to be diabetes, a, diabetes World Diabetes, World Diabetes, World Diabetes, Day. Diabetes Day. So, 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 and this is very, like, this is timely for us to discuss about diabetes and having the, the, the theme for this year as um empowering uh, global awareness wow so this is also a part of awareness on our side you know to talking about this so first on our, our our list of questions to ask today is first ma tell us what is diabetes um diabetes also known as um, diabetes mellitus is a chronic disease which which means it's an ongoing disease that can from when it starts it can last a lifetime in a person so we call it a chronic disease, which is characterized um, by hyperglycemia, which means high blood sugar. So it's a chronic disease hyper characterized by hyperglycemia, and um, it's due to the body not being able to handle blood sugar because the body is resistant to what we call insulin, or the body is not able to produce insulin. insulin. Either the body is able to produce some and the person is resistant to it, or there's, the body is not able to produce any at all, um, thereby giving us the two common types of diabetes, type 2 and type 1 diabetes. So um, it's a disease that has a lot of impact um, in a lot of people across the globe and across the African continent and more a lot to, uh, to do with our country, Nigeria. Okay. Okay, Ma, you, you, you said um, there are two types, type 1 and type 2. Like, is there a specification, like, is one higher than one, or, or okay. how do you categorize? Thank you very much for, you know, asking me to um, go further and explain it. Actually, there are more than, broadly, we can say there are about four types, but the two commonest types are the type 1 and the type 2. Now, having the type 1 means that you have no insulin. The person has absolutely no insulin in the body. While having the type 2 means there's some insulin, but the insulin is not effective. It's not working enough due to various reasons. Um, the type 1 diabetes yes, um, yeah. is seen as a more serious type, uh, but thankfully, it's seen in fewer people. There are fewer people across the globe who have type 1 diabetes. It's seen more in young people, um, it's more prevalent in northern European countries than uh, sub-Saharan Africa. So there's a type 2, which is prevalent around the globe in virtually every country of the globe. You have people with type 2 diabetes, and it occurs because the body is not able to use the insulin that's available to it, what we call insulin resistance. Um, there's also a third type, which is seen in pregnant women, called gestational mm -hmm. diabetes. Um, it can occur due to many reasons and it's becoming more and more common. And there's a fourth type which we call others. Um, it be caused by some uh, medications, some other uh, illnesses. So it's a broad group. So these are the four basic types of diabetes that we have. Okay. But type 2 is the most common um, around the world. Okay. Yeah. So Ma, for someone who like has no idea whatsoever, how do they know they have diabetes? Yes, that's a good question. Um, for people who are, you know, don't know about the disease at all, there are common symptoms that uh, they may use to recognize this disease. Some of these common symptoms include um, 
being very thirsty, they get very thirsty, you know, they want to drink lots of water. They also tend to pass a lot of urine, especially at night. They now notice, oh, um, they have to go to the toilet to pass urine four, five, six, seven, even up to 10 times during the day and overlapping with the night time. So this is one of the common symptoms, thirst and then frequent urination. Other symptoms would also include things like weight loss. The person would be losing weight even though they are still eating well. Um, they could also notice they're, like I said, they're eating well, but they're losing weight. Other symptoms uh, people might notice is that they have wounds that don't heal easily. Mm -hmm. you know, they would have a wound usually, might take in a person who's not diabetic two or three days to heal, but now it's taking longer to heal. Or there could be infections on the skin, like boils. Somebody who doesn't normally have boils, only is having boils on the body and so on. These are some of the symptoms people might notice. They might also notice extreme tiredness. Usually they are very tired, um, what they're able to do in a day, they're not able to achieve that anymore. So, so some these are some of the um, basic symptoms somebody with diabetes might have. Okay, okay. So I I want to also ask, can it be handled? Like, okay, can diabetes be handled without? You get some people who say, ah, no, in, in the village, there's something they will give you. You'll be fine. You need to eat this or eat whatsoever. So how do you, like, because as an awareness, how do we say, okay, no, this is what it is and this is what it should be? Yeah, so um, talking about management of diabetes, um, it's really a very... A um, large topic, and something we may talk about for, you know, I can't exhaust it in the minutes we have here, but I'll try and highlight some important things. So the most important thing to know before you manage a patient with diabetes is that once diagnosed is usually a chronic thing, it's there for life, and we try to educate patients that this is something that goes on for life. Now with, um, I'll be talking mainly about type 2 because it's the commonest one. With type 2 diabetes, Usually the management can start with as basic as dietary and lifestyle changes. If the blood sugar is not high. Um, we talk about diet. You know, it's, it's a disease that has a lot to do with diet. What do I mean by that? I mean that once patients have it, we educate them on how to eat um, a healthy lifestyle diet. And a healthy lifestyle diet means that um, there's less carbohydrate than we normally eat. We know in the African diet, carbohydrates is the main food group. Mm -hmm. But when uh, a person is diabetic, they need to maxim, you know, uh, minimize the carbohydrate in their diet, also to increase their protein and increase vegetables. I wouldn't go as ahead and say all fruits because some fruits have a lot of sugar. So the diet has to do with reducing carbohydrates, increasing protein, and increasing vegetables. So once we are able to talk about diet, we also talk about eating um, regular meals, you know, uh, such that the person doesn't get too hungry and tend to binge on food. Eating three regular meals a day, you know, of small portions. Carbohydrate portions should be reduced a lot. Um, along with diet, we also emphasize exercise a lot. Um, exercise is part of any healthy lifestyle for anybody, mm -hmm. especially in adults. The World Health Organization recommends um, for adults to exercise 30 minutes a day, especially adults with um, chronic diseases like diabetes, hypertension, these metabolic diseases. Yes, it's recommended that they exercise for 30 minutes every day. Mm -hmm. And uh, the kind of exercise that's recommended is very simple. It's not something that is uh, complex. Risk walking 30 minutes every day. That is what is recommended by the World Health Organization. Um, other things we also talk about for diabetics, we encourage um, a sedentary lifestyle. Sedentary lifestyle meaning sitting for hours and hours. We know this um, sedentary lifestyle has become really a fixture in our lives now. Most jobs, um, you have people sitting for hours and hours, so we try and discourage that. Even if you're in a job, that means you have to be in the office throughout. When you sit for 90 minutes, you get up and exercise a bit, walk around and then sit down. This is what WHO recommends as well. Um, we talk about um, staying hydrated at all times for diabetics. You know, the hydration is not good for the blood sugar, mm -hmm. drinking enough water. We talk about sleeping. Getting enough sleep is also quite important. 
uh, for adults getting at least up to seven hours of sleep because um, reducing sleep can also trigger the blood sugar, make it higher. So these are some of the things we talk about um, concerning lifestyle, basic things, diet, exercise, getting enough sleep, drinking enough water. You know? And with the diet, we encourage a lot of uh, basic and simple foods. We encourage foods that are not processed. So, you know, this is natural. a plus now, natural yeah. foods. We don't like, um, this is not a disease that likes processed food. So we encourage patients and people that have it, or even people that don't have it in order to prevent, that they eat as simply as possible. Um, foods from the supermarkets that are processed should be cut out as much as possible. Uh, we encourage simple foods with carbohydrates at a, at a minimum. And even vegetables, we encourage that they should be eaten whole, you know, washed and prepared, cooked if necessary, and eaten, not taken in forms of smoothies and uh, or blended. So we want, why we say this is that we want the uh, patients to get a lot of fiber. You get a lot of fiber when you eat food that is natural. But food that is processed, the fiber is stripped off. And um, fiber is very good, as we know. It slows down digestion and it's a good, it forms the bulk of the diet, keeps people from getting too hungry. So it's good for the blood sugar control. It keeps the blood sugar control very steady. So these are some of the changes that can be um, instituted in the life of a person with diabetes or any adult trying to live a healthy lifestyle, trying to prevent this disease. Mm. You really expanded, like you said, a lot of things. So, so how does one get diabetes? Is this something hereditary or you can also get it along the line or how, how does this happen? Yes, um, very interesting that you ask that. Diabetes type 2, type 1 diabetes, there are two types. One type can be inherited, one type there's no cause for it. It can just happen. But for type 2, yes, again, for type 2, um, there's an inheritance pattern to type 2, but that's not all. Um, having a family history is just one risk factor for diabetes, for type 2 diabetes. Other risk factors can include um, uh, obesity. Obesity is a big risk factor for type 2 diabetes, especially now. We see obesity is on the rise in our society, again, because of the sedentary lifestyle, mm. because of the diets where... More and more these days were exposed to Western diets. There are fast food places all over, especially in the very urban centers in Nigeria, Abuja, Lagos, Potapur, Juba, even other areas, not necessarily these three. So obesity is a risk factor. Um, patients being hypertensive, once the patients are hypertensive, it's also a risk factor. That's having high blood pressure. Yeah. It's a risk factor for having type 2 diabetes. Um, having high cholesterol too. I'm sure we've heard about people saying, oh, I have high cholesterol. Once you have that too, you are at risk of becoming diabetic. Um, sedentary lifestyle, as I've talked about, is another risk factor for having type 2 diabetes. I, I, these are basically some of the things along with uh, family history. We can also have, um, like I talked to you about women who are pregnant, so women who have had it during pregnancy, mm -hmm. a condition called gestational diabetes, they can also, they are prone to having it later in life. Maybe after um, having their children later in life, they can also develop type 2 diabetes. So having it in pregnancy is a risk factor. Indeed, while we're talking about women and uh, getting pregnant, women who have had more than five babies too, mm -hmm. at risk, that alone on its own is a risk factor for getting wow type 2 diabetes. So these are the number of things, you know, that uh, people should know out there, part of the awareness that yeah. if you have this, for instance, you have a family history, you should be checking your blood sugar. You shouldn't wait until you have it. If you are obese, um, you have to fit into your lifestyle, exercise and diet already as it is, not to wait for the disease to happen in order to prevent it. Yeah. So Ma, I want to ask concerning this um, gestation, Gestational, gestational diabetes. Gest gestational yes. diabetes. As a result of, okay, the woman being pregnant and she has um, diabetes that period, does it affect the child? Yes, it can affect the child if it's not detected early. Women who have gestational diabetes and it's not detected on time or not even detected at all, which can happen, that child, if that child, um, a number of things can happen. The mother can have a miscarriage, that's one. 
early on in the pregnancy. Mm. If the child um, survives to when it's born, it can come as a stillbirth, you know, die just after that because of some of the damage the sugar will do to the baby yeah. once the baby is in the room. Babies that are born and survive can come out as very large babies, more than 4 kg at birth, what mm. we call macrosomic babies, people mm. macrosomia. Um, these same children can have diseases of involving the heart. They can have what we call congenital heart diseases. They can have also diseases involving the spine and the brain. Um, neural tube defects, they are caused. They can have those. And a, a number of other conditions. So you can see it's a very yeah. dangerous condition for the baby. Yeah. Usually during pregnancy and the mother has it, the mother may not suffer so much. But if the sugar is not controlled, the baby would definitely come off um, with a lot of complications. The baby can also be born, ironically, with low blood sugar. Mm -hmm. If the mother has high, what we call uh, neonatal hypoglycemia, also a very dangerous condition for the baby. So a lot of things can happen. So women who have a family history should be screened for gestational diabetes. Once a woman has a family history, uh, the once she's um, early in the pregnancy, even as early as the first trimester, she should go to the hospital. You know, if the woman already knows it's her duty to even bring it to the um, knowledge, you know, bring the it to, up to the doctors. Yes, yeah. that I have this, please, and I aware I'm aware that I need to be screened. You know, something now uh, over the years, I think where there's more awareness, there's more screening mm -hmm. of mothers with a family history, so that they can prevent their babies from having these complications. Wow. Wow. That's, that's really, it's a new one. Like I'm even like, wow. <laughs> like, so is there a way she can prevent herself from having that diabetes, that gestational diabetes? Well, gestational diabetes like um, type 2 can be prevented by exercise and diet and those um, and modifications, again. lifestyle modifications, or we call them therapeutic lifestyle changes. But it may still happen, you know, because why? Because for gestational diabetes, we use lower levels of sugar to diagnose it. So even despite this, a woman may still develop. So the advice for women, you know, who know they have a family history is to screen. We call, tell their practitioner, their gynecologists, oh, I have this history so that they are screened. They should know this themselves yeah. so that they can even push for it to be screened. So once they are screened and they are found to have it, despite what they may have done to prevent, it's very important to treat. Because gestational diabetes, unlike type 2, will can go away after the woman delivers the baby, and then she can continue with her lifestyle. Mm. So it's for them to be identified and be treated during the pregnancy, during those nine months. And then once the baby is out, sugar normally comes out, and the woman can continue with lifestyle changes to remain uh, normal, to remain without diabetes. Okay. So my, I want to ask, like, from, from experience and management and of, of diabetes, what is the hardest part for patients with diabetes? Like, what is, what is so hard for them when it comes to... Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you say that, you know, I, I think that there, there are many difficult parts for the patients. It's not an easy disease to have. It's not easy to live with. I think one of the hardest parts for patients is knowing that they're going to live with this for the rest of their lives. I know it's, it's really hard to come to terms with that. That's a chronic thing. They're going to have it all their lives. Um, secondly, I would say that another part that's very hard for most patients is the diet. You know, now you're going to be on a diet. You can't eat everything you want to eat. It's really difficult. It's not an easy yeah. thing. Um, a lot of simple sugars are cut out of the diet completely. Uh, patients are expected to eat much less carbohydrate. And it's particularly different, uh, difficult, I believe, for us Africans because we're, we're so used to this high-carbohydrate diet all our lives. So one day you just come in and a doctor tells you, oh, you have to eat much less of this. So it's really, really difficult having to have it all your life and then having to be told you have to restrict many things from your diet, you have to eat much less. Another part that is difficult, I've found, for patients is having to check their blood sugar all the time. You know, the blood sugar check... Um, there's a check that patients do at home, apart from the ones that the blood is drawn in the hospital. We call it um, self-monitoring of blood glucose. So they have to 
use a small machine at home, prick themselves and check the blood sugar. So they find there are some patients that have had to tell me, oh, doctor, I can never do that. I can't do it. You know, it's difficult to use a needle to prick myself. So they find that so difficult to, you know. We haven't even started talking about medication yet. Medication is also very challenging for patients. You have to be on medication every day of your life for the rest of your life. It's not an easy thing. Yeah, this medication draws us to the part where, you know, with the rising economic changes and the prices of drugs, is there no other, like, are there other effective ways for them to manage it? You know, it's good you brought up the rising cost of drugs. We're actually facing a crisis right now where diabetic patients cannot afford medication. It's, it's really bad right now. Um, a lot of patients cannot afford their medication. Because patients are diabetic, if we go back to the beginning of our talk, I mentioned that hypertension is a risk factor, high cholesterol. Mm -hmm. So a lot of patients that have diabetes, especially type 2, would end up having hypertension and high cholesterol as well. So they will be on medications for those, and then the diabetic medication. So as you can imagine, it's very costly. Prices of drugs are very high now, and um, some of the diabetic patients also have to be on insulin which is also very expensive. So that is why now, more than ever, since type 2 is preventable, lifestyle change, we're preaching lifestyle changes more than ever. It's cheaper, more effective, and, you know, less um, stressful to the patient, to the practitioner, and even on the health system. We're having so many patients now is training the health system. So prevention is really key, you know, prevention, prevention. So prevention is what can be done by going through these lifestyle modifications I've talked about to, um, to keep patients free from diabetes as long as possible. Some even for the rest of their lives, it's possible with effective lifestyle changes. It's really possible. So we thank you for staying with us on this episode. Like we've heard from Dr. Ramatu, lifestyle changes lifestyle changes because prevention as they say is always better than you know going to look for cure and with the rise cost of everything we know that lifestyle changes is something that we cannot overemphasize so thank you for staying with us thank you for coming to this episode and sharing wisdom with us we we are really grateful thank you thank you very much for having me it was uh, really delightful being here thank you yes, so continue to stay with us on health and wellness with leadership tv until next time do ask us questions on this and we'll get back to you with our answers thank you and bye thank you for watching for sponsorship and advert placements please contact 080-3688-6158 Last Word Leadership Podcast Studio You have the last word